Time for a soccer down here, 1v1. And for this one, we go to Lexington and hang out with Lexington Sporting Club Chief Operating Officer Stephen Short, who we're used to seeing in other locales. This is a new business card, new opportunity. So, Stephen, thanks for hanging out for a 1v1 in a very different location. Hey, John, thanks for having me. I think it's uh, exciting to talk from the other side of the table as well. So let's uh, let's have some fun today. All right. So let, let's just go back to the why. Uh, why take this move? Have you always thought of yourself as a builder in some aspect? I, I've been very fortunate. Um, I think in the latter part of my career, it's turned into a building career. I um, really enjoyed that aspect. And uh, you know, being at USL in the league office for almost 12 and a half years, I spent most of my time doing that, right? Well, finding new markets or new individuals that want to help grow the game. And so um, when started talking to Lexington and really getting this team up and off the ground, and um, I don't think anyone was looking for it. I think it was a tremendous opportunity that arose. And, um, you know, being from Kentucky, it's kind of my way to give back to the state again. Um, so I'm kind of living a dual life between Florida and Lexington right now. For those that don't know the soccer footprint in the state of Kentucky, I know that the the southeastern United States has grown in its import when it comes to the sport over the last, really the last handful of years. But for those that don't know the soccer footprint and what the sport means to Lexington specifically in the sport of Kentucky, break it down for me. Oh, as the state as a whole, I mean, I grew up, you know, in the early to late 90s. Um, playing club ball and, and high school ball in the state. And, and that time it was still on the up and up. It the, Really, the main club in the state was Javanon and out of Louisville. Um, and that's continued to grow. And Lexington was growing on a parallel path. Uh, but when you really look at the state, um, I think Louisville has done a great, tremendous job of helping spike the game. And especially with their on-field success, playing in another championship final. I mean, just unbelievable. Um, but then you also saw the growth in Cincinnati. And you saw it in Lexington, but I don't know why, and I can't pinpoint where that inflection point was. You had multiple strong clubs here, lots of players playing um, and moving on to maybe going to Cincinnati, going to Louisville, going down into the Carolinas, um, and even staying here to play at UK um, on the men's and women's side. So I think this with Lexington Sporting Club gives us the opportunity to really kind of pre- create a um, pro on the top model, if you would, and start to really kind of see how we can develop these players to a different level, um, provide them more services than what they've had before, uh, more coaching, more structure, and really kind of develop the game, um, not just for Eastern Kentucky or Central Kentucky, but really as the state of the whole, and start to say, okay, well, we're going to do it our way, and we're going to do it the Lexington way, and we're going to make that the best way possible. So when you look at, you know, and with your time in Florida, you got to see mm-hmm. how – the South really did to, to pull from hip hop and rap. The South really did have something to say specifically where USL mm-hmm. league one is concerned, considering oh, yeah. where I'm sitting as we're taping this interview is the home of the champion in Statesboro, Georgia. Mm-hmm. You've got Statesboro, you've got Chattanooga, you've got Greenville, you've got Cary, North Carolina FC, mm-hmm. you've got Charlotte, you've got Richmond, you're getting Knoxville. You're adding Lexington to this whole conversation. What's it been like to see the Southeast kind of be the this the flag bearer for USL League One and you know, kind of for the USL in general? Extremely exciting. Um, you know, on the championship side, you can even start looking at extending over into Birmingham and Louisville and Memphis and continuing to build out from there. You know, the tremendous thing about it is the cities are all close to each other as well. So the, we already have these built-in rivalries between the cities, and now it extends to the clubs, and um, we'll even see it down through some players, but – uh, when we were launching League One, um, if I put my USL hat on it, and I was just telling um, our, our primary owner this morning this, we were talking about it, that that model was Lexington was the first city we visited. Um, whether it was by chance or in reality, it was what it could have been the hub of a region. Um, if you look at the wheel and the hub and the spoke, and it just it worked out that way. So if you go back to a lot of those cities we were visiting early in League One, those conversations have continued. The growth has continued. Chattanooga now has a beautiful stadium. Statesboro's in the midst of theirs, which you got to see that build. It's going to be beautiful. Um, and you look through, you know, Greenville's what they've started with and what their long-term vision is. There is growth in League One. There is growth in all these markets as well to say, we're going to put our own stamp on it. 
now am i a little um proud of the geography that we've been able to build and that we're seeing the growth of the game 100 percent 100 percent and so, but i think we're going to see that regionality grow throughout the rest of the country as well it just takes a couple of those flags to be planted and then it starts to build out from there so you'll see um, like Central Valley Fuego being out of the West Coast, Spokane coming in in 24, um, Santa Barbara um, also putting all their efforts in out there with a phenomenal group out there. We're going to start to see those regionalized pockets grow. And we're excited here in Lexington to know that, you know, ultimately we could be a multiple conference league that you know, then we can start to say, okay, we'll have great rivalries here. We'll have great crossover and start to see um, really the type of players we're going to develop and move throughout systems and help them um, catapult their careers as well. Man, I think that that's part of the USL League One mantra slash footprint slash model where you have the the southeast pocket. You've got the the eventual, I imagine, the northeast pocket, the midwest pocket, the west pocket. And then you have all of these different elements because what it does, and I mean, if you think about it from the minor league baseball perspective, it cuts down on travel expenses. It keeps mm -hmm. your overhead low. It keeps all those things for sustainability it keeps them to the forefront to where you're not having to go. And yes, I know that there's growth in a league, especially in league one, but you're not having to go from Statesboro on that, that nonstop flight to Fuego to Fresno, California, <laughs> you know, yeah. to, to fly to Santa Barbara, to eventually fly to Spokane, you know, to, to fly to, to Northern Colorado hailstorm, you know, to, to keep that, to keep those expenses low, to keep the rivalries there and to keep the intensity, all of these different things, I think add to what we're seeing from USL league one. Certainly, we, we want to be a club that welcomes uh, fans from our opposing teams. We want you to be able to come here, have a tremendous experience, um, as we would accept uh, or expect that reciprocation. And we've seen that in League One already. Uh, we've seen in the championships, certainly. Uh, so I think where Lexington's geographically located, we kind of have the best of all the scenarios where we could have tremendous championship rivals um, through USL. We could have tremendous rivals through MLS um, in the area and as well as in League One. So when you kind of look at it all together, like, man, we're, we're really kind of this awesome crossroads of a market and what the city can provide. And, and we certainly know Lexington is a tremendous sports town. Uh, the men's program in town is number two in the country. Uh, we spent some time out at their matches already. The women's program is strong. Um, now we're getting in, you know, on the back end of football and getting into college basketball season. So all you're seeing is this fever for sports continue to grow here and we're happy to be a part of it and i know that part of the key also is the the live work play model when it comes mm -hmm. to facilities and you mentioned that you're getting to the the expanded facility here in states where obviously mm -hmm. uh, covid 19 pushed that a couple of years back but what you're seeing with the development at chi memorial stadium in chattanooga right there at east ridge where it is literally it is play the stadium is there and then you've got the live and work that's being added around it. And, and I imagine from what we've heard early returns in Lexington, that that's the plan as well mm -hmm. for Lexington Sporting Club as you go forward. It is. And I think there's a key point to it, um, especially in the play and live side. We're taking an approach on the player side to make sure that we're putting the best facility possible forward for them, whether that means uh, if we're installing turf, if it's top of the line FIFA certifiable turf for our entire club down to um, what does our performance facilities look like and how do we provide them with strength programs and um, quality places to live as well. So it's, it is an entire package and we're putting all those pieces together right now, which is really exciting. Um, it's fun to be on a project where we're looking at multiple phases of development to where it is all about providing a competitive atmosphere and something where players will want to play here. They'll want to live here. Um, and they're definitely going to have some fun here. What I like to do when we have these conversations with, with clubs that are just, you know, building up their momentum and they haven't had a, a game that counts yet mm -hmm. is I know that there's a to-do list and it can be in any number of places. Yeah. Could be on, you know, could be on a phone. You pull out a mm -hmm. stylus, you sit there and you write a note down, you jam the stylus back in the phone. Phone, you know, continues being a phone. Could be on, you know, the the notepad with the magnet that's on the fridge that you sit there at two o'clock in the morning and it's like, you know, man, I got to get a drink of water. Ooh, I have an idea. You write it down there on the fridge right. so you don't forget it. Absolutely you go back right. to bed and then at 7 30 in the morning, you sit there and go, where'd that idea come from? Uh, you know, it could be on a six foot 
big dry erase board that is off your left as you're sitting there in your office, because I imagine that's where the space is looking at the right hand side and the right shoulder, yeah, you're kind of right. pinned in. Where is that to do list right now? And what do you think the next thing that you can cross off of that list is as you continue to build Lexington Sporting Club? Oh, well, what's exciting for us today, this week is we're actually hiring, which is really thrilling for me because we're going to start um, building our team out even more, ramping up for the first season. I can't wait to cross that one off. Uh, you know, really just build our bandwidth is we have so much going on. I, I have multiple. I have a whole wall on this side. I have multiple monitors here, multiple lists, tons of post-it notes um, in some form or fashion in some type of organization. But you're right. It hits you at any time. Different things you think about. Following that, what we're really excited about now that the League One CBA, um, you know, is public and we progressed through that. I know that our technical staff, I've sat on calls with agents already and we are full tilt, you know, trying to find those players that will properly represent the type of game we want to play, represent our community and really those that are looking for that opportunity to shine. And I'm excited to work with Sam Stockley, our head coach and sporting director to, you know, he does all the all those details, but I get to sit with him on that journey to make sure we're good. And I think we're going to put a great product on the field um, and really be able to also make sure that what we do um, for the first team uh, trickles throughout our entire organization, whether it's the front office or it's through our academy or through our youth club um, and even to our indoor location. So we're thrilled. When it comes to Sam, for those that don't know him, what kind of an individual is he in this umbrella, both as a person and as a coach, as he's trying to work both of these tracks, what mm -hmm. kind of an individual is he now that he's a part of your umbrella? He's a near and dear friend, uh, professionally and personally as well. I think that's what we've developed over the years. And he and I have been working on Lexington for years. And a lot of people don't know that is that when Sam was in, in, in England for a while, right around COVID, and we were having a lot of conversations about expansion, we were trying to figure those out and it'd be, you know, eight, nine, 10 o'clock Eastern. And he'd be calling me from London and we'd be having some late night, you know, zoom sessions talking about business models and what type of play. And so that's kind of fun to build on top of that, but you can't match him for energy. You cannot do it. Um, he is relentless when it comes to the type of play he wants to have to making sure our players are playing properly, that they're not just, you know, getting the result, but they're, performing the way to get the result. And I think that's extremely important through a structured system. Um, we are a close knit group here in our front office and with our entire organization. And I think you're going to see a guy on the sideline that when the big plays are made, he's going to be cheering with the best of them. And then and there'll be times where I'm sure he's barking and I would expect nothing less as long as we do it within the rules and regulations of the league, of course. But um, you know, and if I think if Sam had his way, he'd be the Nike model. And he'd have all the coolest Nike gear out there and be someone working from him. So I think he'll probably be our, our fashion icon, too, for a little bit. Oh, yeah. fashion icon? What are we expecting here? Just styling and profiling with the swoosh? Yeah, or? it's just styling and profiling. But it's just Sam's M.O. He's he's a, He likes to be on the cutting edge of it. And um, so we've, we've had discussions about that. Are you, know, this, are you the suit and blazer kind of guy? Are you the track suit guy? And um, But I, I think with our partnership at Nike, um, you know, there's – it's just something that we know that the performance gear means a lot, especially to the city. Um, Nike means a lot to Lexington. And, uh, you know, we're always trying to find ways to be a leader in, in that aspect because we know football is more than just on field, right? It is a lifestyle. It's part of our culture. And we're really going to do a lot to try to intermix that here. What are you enjoying the most about this process? And what intimidates you the most about this process? Oh, if enjoying the most. You know, it's kind of, it's a different perspective, to be honest with you. For being at the league for so long, we were always collecting best practices and understanding the models and how things work. And, and you know, you're relaying those to a lot of clubs and helping them through it, but now we're walking through it. So I think that's a lot of fun, um, trying to find new ways um, for, to us operate a club or to, um, you know, build a facility. Those are exciting because those really put big imprints on clubs and what our profile will be in the future. Um most nervous about first home game, no doubt. You know, I mean, it's the holiday season's coming up. Uh, you know, the league announced its Seat Geek partnership today, which is exciting. Uh, so, you know, as we build up our front office, and we've got we have over 
2,500 deposits that we've got to convert to season tickets. And that's phenomenal for three, for league one. And so, and we expect that number to continue to grow. So it's, it's getting that first game and making sure that it's an awesome fan experience, that it's seamless, um, that our staff feels confident and empowered and making sure that and we're all able to do our jobs to the best of our ability. So what are the next markers that the, those of us outside that knock on your door and say, hey, I want to do an interview with you? What are the next markers that are coming up that we need to keep an eye on? Well, certainly, um, you know, hopefully we'll have some facility news here in the near future, which will be exciting for us in year one. So everybody knows where we'll be calling home. Um, that's kind of been under wraps for a little bit. Um, I think with most expansion clubs, that's pretty normal. Um, so we're getting that into place. Um, that'll be big news. Certainly looking forward to our kit unveil. Um, we're working through that right now, which has been exciting. Uh, you know, our, our, our academy and our youth club are already playing and um, they are in kits, but that won't be um, what the first team is wearing. So it's going to be nice to try to at least get that inaugural component down. Um, and then how we can kind of come up with some fun designs. I think we have, you know, your standard, um, but we also have some pretty exciting designs that we'll put out that really represent Lexington. Um, more on that in the future, I'm sure, and I promise you that. But um, that'll be a fun moment. There's something special about when you just walk around this town or when you go to the grocery store, you're seeing all these kids already in your club's gear. You know, you didn't get that. And I love working for the league, but at the league, I remember I was in like a movie theater in Tampa and you saw a kid wearing a Sacramento Republic jersey. And you had to stop his parents saying, where did you get that? And why are you 3,000 miles from home? Um, those are impactful moments. And so here you, you get a daily reminder when you're out in the city and you're roaming around running errands, whether it's, you know, for work or meetings or, prefer or personally, the impact that you can have here. Um, and that's a big accountability factor to make sure you're doing everything you can to make sure it's right. All right. So cut the promo for me for those that want to uh, keep an eye on what's going on with you up there in Lexington. How do they do it? You know, easiest way um, I'm working on changing over my Twitter handles and all my social media right now. Um, but Lex Sporting is the easiest way to find us. You can find us on all your social media channels. Um, you know, our, our brand is awesome. You know, we have a great brand that was created. We love it. It's young, but it's also got a hint of history and tradition here. Uh, so please join us for what will be uh, one heck of an inaugural season if you really want to enjoy some good football um, in person or on TV. Stephen Short, Chief Operating Officer, Lexington Sporting Club. Thanks for hanging out for a 1v1. Great to get the update. Great to see you up there and can't wait for everything else to advance as you get to full song. Thanks for hanging out for a 1v1. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll stay in touch, I'm sure.